All right, how's everyone doing? It's week seven. Um, I apologize for forgetting to record. <laughs> Point the microphone toward myself. I apologize for forgetting to record a video last week. Um, I just kind of got sidetracked with all the testing and whatnot that's going on right now. Um, but in any case, I don't think last week uh, was too big of an issue for anyone because it was primarily just going over um, functions uh, using using lots of functions with linear well linear functions specifically. So hopefully it was getting everyone a little bit more familiar with using that function notation uh, in context of lines. Uh, however, we're about to jump all the way up to chapter four. Um, you'll notice at on the schedule. Let me go ahead and pull it up here. Um, on the schedule, you can see uh, section 4.1 is due next Monday. So you have an entire week to do that section. I do not recommend uh, delaying and waiting until Sunday night or something like that, because we're starting to get into exponents or exponential expressions, I should say. Um, so this means that we're no longer going to be working with lines exclusively. Um, so uh, exponential functions are curved. Um, and we see them uh, quite often whenever we have something that is um, that changes. Let me go ahead and put my camera back on here. When we have something that changes uh, by a particular percentage every uh, during a given time period, um, we often see these. If you see like uh, interest uh, interest rates, uh, for instance, that's you know if you have a certain amount of money in your bank account. Stuff is jumping off the desk. Um, if you have a certain amount of money in your bank account uh, every year, you might earn, I don't know, 5% interest. Um, well, if you let that, let, let that money sit and accrue uh, next year, it would also earn 5%. But the actual amount of money that it's earning would, would increase because the amount of money that's in there increased. Um, and maybe not per year, let's say per month, because that's more realistic. Um, you know, if, you, if after, uh, let's say there's a 1% per month interest rate, you know, you start out with $100 in the bank account, next month you have $101, and then you earn 1% uh, of that $101, which is another dollar and one cent. So you have $102 and one cent. Um, and the, the, uh, the rate at which it's going up is, uh, the actual dollar value that it's going up is changing, it's increasing, but it, the, the percentage rate is what stays the same. So in any case, that's uh, that's an example of an exponential um, saying that you, you when you have that value change by one percent per month, that would be an exponential rate. Um, however, it doesn't have to be just growth. You can also have exponential rates uh, when you're talking about something going away. Uh, depreciation is an example here. So if you had something that um, when you first buy it. Um, it's worth a certain amount, and every year the value decreases by 10% of whatever it's currently worth. That's also a, uh, it's also exponential. It's an expo exponential decay, which means it's going to go down over time, as opposed to an exponential growth, which goes up over time. But they're still both uh, they're they're both exponential, and we treat them identically, essentially. Um, yeah, I guess we do treat them identically. Um, yeah. Uh, oftentimes we'll see, so obviously when we're talking about value, um, uh, we see these exponentials. We also see exponentials when you're talking about population growth. Uh, if you're talking about um, the rate at which bacteria grows or viruses grow or something like that, that tends to be exponential, uh, at least until they're capped by their resources. Um, but you know they, they'll double every certain amount of time period, that's exponential growth. Or, um, or if, they, um, if they die off, uh, you know, half the population dies every certain time period. That's also exponential. It's exponential decay as, as opposed to ex exponential growth. But like I said, they're both exponential. Um, a cool thing about exponential expressions, um, they're still uniquely identified by two points. So if we have a point here and a point here, there's only one exponential growth curve, uh, one exponential curve that will go through those two points. Uh, if I have this one and this one, there's only one exponential curve that will go through those two points. Um, and the rate, uh, the the way we find the equations is actually quite kind of similar to uh, to lines. It kind of makes sense to go from dealing with lines to exponential uh, functions because there's there's some similarities there. Now that does not mean you'll be able to use the linear equations. So like your slope formula, uh, we're not going to be using the slope formula for a little while. Uh, slope intercept form, again, that's that's not the right form for these. We're gonna you're gonna see a different form. Uh, 
a times b to the x, or y equals a times b to the x is a general, um, one general way we can write an exponential expression. Uh, and we're also going to um, see uh, a constant called e. This may be your first time experiencing this constant e. Um, it turns out uh, it, when you start dealing with these uh, exponential, especially continuous growth, uh, continuously compounded growth, um, it's very natural for this E to show up, which is why it's sometimes called the natural number. And if you've ever heard of a natural logarithm, uh, it's related to that as well. We'll talk about logarithms later in this chapter. Um, right now, we're just dealing with ex exponential expressions. Um, so. In any case, I think that's enough of an introduction for the week. Um, I do want to remind you that uh, my office hours, I am available for office hours on Tuesdays from uh, 11 to 1 and on Thursdays from 1 to 1.50. Um, let me just pull that up here. Um, I should probably share my screen again as soon as I can find it. Um, here we go. So uh, looking at the, the Moodle page, if you're wondering how to get to my office hours, uh, just in the Your Instructor tab here, I find that this is probably the easiest area because it also says what my office hours are. And I just have a Zoom link there. If you click on that, it'll, well, okay, it's not going to work because I'm currently recording on Zoom. Um, but uh, yeah, if you just click on that, it'll get you in, um, into my office hours. I'm only there during those times. So um, you know, don't don't uh, attend the you know don't bother going clicking on that link outside of those times. Um, if I if I'm not there during that time, shoot me an email, and I probably just forgot it to start up Zoom. Um, I am definitely in my office during those times, so um, I should be able to respond to you fairly quickly. Um, I'm pretty good about making sure I have that Zoom link just you know sitting in the empty room during those office hours, though. Um, if you need to schedule sometimes outside of those office hours, because if, you know, if you're struggling in the class or something like that, you need to talk with me and these don't work, uh, we can schedule something else. Uh, just send me an email and we'll figure it out. Um, other than that, I think that's everything I have for you. Um, I'll, uh, well, I guess you'll hear from me again next week. Have a good week.